Hi, I'm Stu. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you five different ways I use person key. Starting off with this little video clip here. We're going to duplicate it, then double tap on it. It'll take us to colors and effects. We then want to go to our person key and we tap on it once. Generally speaking, you don't have to adjust any of the settings, erosion, distance, or edge blur radius. It kind of works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but for the most part, it works. What you do want to do though, is change the quality to accurate or slowest. This can lead to playback issues, but it's just all about jerkiness when you export it, it's absolutely fine. And once you've created this, so that you can speed up this part of the process, just tap on save preset and we'll just give it the name person key. Now what I like to do is see when I'm naming a new preset, I give it three hashtags at the beginning and you can only do this at the initial naming. You can't do this when it's renaming. And then I'm just going to type person key and then just tap on the little star plus and then we've got our person key there. And the reason for the three hashtags is it forces it up to the top left so you can see easiest in the presets. And then all we need to do from here is go to our background or at least our first layer, go back into column presets. And if we just look for a preset, you could either use one of the faded ones or black and white you'll now see you get a pop color effect. See how it's just a little bit jerky? That's because of the accuracy aspect. But it works just fine. There we go, that's the first technique. Next, we're gonna duplicate the layer. Next, highlight the video clip, duplicate the layer. And this time, instead of going to color and effects and things like that, just go into your presets and you'll see your person key is at the top. And what we can do with this is color grade it differently. So if we go into our first layer, we could, for example, add in a warm up, reduce the brightness a little bit, and then going back out and into our top layer, we've got our person key obviously loaded up. But what we can do is tap on original. And for example, I could open up the shadow amount a little bit. There's a, an exaggerated view, but just making it a little bit more subtle. Add a wee bit of yellow. Or you could go blue and cool it down. I'm just going to add a wee bit of yellow. And in the case of this, just a little bit more contrast. So you can use person key to separate effectively foreground and background and do a split color grading. And the next one, well, what I've got here is a lovely little gentleman with ginger hair. And then next to him is I've got a sampled background from the first frame in the video clip. Now, how I made this is I created a snapshot, pulled it into Photoshop, did a little bit of Photoshop magic on it. If you want to see how I did this, at the end of the video tutorial, there's a bonus little tutorial that shows you that process. So if you're interested, you can go to that. Highlight our clip, duplicate it. In this case, I'm actually going to move it across so it's behind the static background. Again, into our person key, tap on it. I'm going to do this time as I'm actually going to a cut in between the two clips just reduce the overall size of the clip and then move this in here I'll move this in here so we've got just a little bit of nothing and then obviously you can have it so that he just pops into existence and if you want to you can highlight this clip and just add a little cross dissolve and I've got it set to 12 frames rather than two seconds so it's nice and short and sweet. If you want to be able to do that, all you've got to do is go into your settings and reduce the clip defaults and transition. I set it to 12 frames sometimes. So the first part of this clip gives us a kind of pop-up and then a Star Trek dissolve. And then the next part of the clip, we've obviously got pop-up. What we can do with this is go into the clip itself, go to the beginning of the clip. We want to go to frame and fit. And from there, drop a keyframe at the beginning. And then we want to Tuck him out the way. So I'm just going to move to the right and slide him until he disappears. And then I want to move the keyframes, probably about six frames. So literally less than a quarter of a second. Add a new keyframe. And then all you've got to do is just double tap on position Y. It'll pop back up. And you'll see if we play this back, he just pops up. And you can use that across like transitions and things like that. So you can go from one background to another if you wanted to, or it's just a unique way of introducing your subject. So once again, same thing, 
duplicate the clip with this one. Just add the piercing key, go to the background, tap on our pencil, color in effects, and we're going to go to our blurs and other goodies. And then I'm just going to tap on Gaussian 5. You'll see we blurred the background out a little bit more. And if you want to, we can go and add a different color effect. For example, Mini Mart, and it gives a more stylized look. So again, it's a bit of a combination of blur effect and also effectively color grading. That looks quite cool. No more. And the final one, again, highlight the clip, duplicate it. This time though, what we're going to do is we're going to raise this up one layer. I've already made a piece of text, which I'm going to drag into the background, which actually decrease the overall effect. And with this one, we're going to go into our presets, add the person key. You've got the ability to have the person behind the text, or the text behind the person, I should say, which is quite cool. But another thing you can do, which you don't think of so much, but you should really give it a go, is highlight the top clip where the person key is applied. And then from there, go into your settings, Go to frame and fit, and then from there, change the blending mode to likes of screen, and you'll see you'll get the text actually blending through, or lighten, or color dodge, links a linear dodge. Just play about with the different settings, see what works, what doesn't work. So my hard light looks quite good, but we just come out of there, and then you can see we've got the text interacting with the person over the top. And if you want to, you can just obviously go back to blending mode, change the blend back to normal, and you've got the person in front. And then the last option is actually just reducing the opacity. And then you can kind of have a mix of the two, and that looks quite cool as well. These are five simple ways of blending person. If you enjoyed the video today, don't forget to give it a like. I love it when you guys comment and give me feedback on the video. So feel free to drop a comment below, and I will catch you on the next one. See you later. As promised, here's the bonus Photoshop video tutorial. Now, I've got the freeform lasso tool set up. I'm just going to quickly and easily surround our ginger subject here. And then I'm going to choose generative fill, no text inside the box, and that gets rid of everything. You've got three options to choose from, and I'm just going to basically pick one I like the most. And that's it. We're done. See you later.